Well, this is Paul, and today on the bench we have this Navy signal generator. It's a SG85 slash URM 25D RF signal generator in unbelievable condition physically. It's just beautiful. Has all of the components in the lid. She took the cover off doesn't work. The pilot lights, light, I brought it up on the very act, but there's absolutely no output at all. So I think it's power supply capacitor issues. I'm in the process of taking it out of the case. Apologize for the shakiness of the camera. We got all these screws out all the way around. There's 12 screws except these three, which I'm going to take out now. Slide it out of the case. Disconnect it from the power supply, which it stays in the case, it's attached to the back. Um, we can take it out later, which is actually the first thing I need to do is check the power supply. So I'm gonna pull the generator out, set it aside, and take out the power supply. Anyway, I'll record the video on and off as I go. Sorry, it's a little jumpy here. I'm trying to actually move the camera around as I go so you can see different um, parts of the device. This thing weighs, I don't know, feels like 80 pounds. It weighs a ton. I'd hate to had to lug this thing around, but I'm sure they had to um, back in the day. Amazing condition. Just unbelievable. Even the exterior of the case is in amazing condition. So, you know, it's, just, it's just unreal. I can't find hardly anything on it. So, uh, a few little scuffs where it's been in and out of the cabinet before, but that don't surprise me none. Like I said, it weighs a ton. Um, so I'm going to take it out, and then we'll take a look at the uh, power supply, and then we'll pull it out and go from there. Okay, I got this front of it out, and you can see the power supply in the back there, and the cables just connect to it. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it and take it the rest of the way out. But I thought you might like to see what that looks like um, as we work on taking it out. Okay, got the generator out and now we're going to take the power supply out. So put you on the overhead there so you can see it. Basically it has screws in the back and in the bottom. So I'm going to take the screws out of the back first. And it's these screws here. Oh, there is a scratch there. See that? That's the only thing I've seen so far in the case. That scratch on the back there. And those are in there. I'm going to need a bigger screwdriver. Let's get a huge, huge one here. I don't think this power supply has ever been out. It doesn't look like it. Excuse my reach here. I'm going to come up, up the throw the screws in. Alrighty, now we will gently take the power supply out of here. And then we could have a charge still on those capacitors because I did have it powered up. I'm going to set this here. I'm going to set this in a safe place and I'll be right back. Still going to put the back away. Okay, here we have it. it. has two power transformers. This is the input transformer. It has an input of 115 volts, 50 to 1,000 hertz. Or cy <coughs> excuse me, cycles per second. So this would work anywhere, right? 50 to 1,000 cycles per second. 
The secondary has two secondaries. There's a 6.5 volt, 4.5 amp, which does the filament of the tubes. And then it has a 450 volt center tap, 75 milliamp B plus winding for the rectifier. The working voltage to ground primary is 165 volts RMS and it tests 500 volts. Well, that's what you test it with. Secondary one is 10 volts to ground and the secondary two is 320 volts to ground which is half of the 750, uh, 450 right it, well the center tap 450 oh wow yeah 320 volts to ground oh that's how i mess okay so that's uh ac here we have a choke and it's a filter choke it's working with these capacitors to give us some nice clean dc the input voltage is 20 to 120 volts dc current is 75 milliamps dc resistance is 400 ohms Working voltage to ground is 265 volts, RMS, and it's tested at 750 volts, setting on the test equipment. And this here holds these three filter capacitors in. Everything's bolted, right? It's military. Um, you can see that somebody has been in here because the lid of this uh, transformer is pretty well scuffed up, right? So somebody's been in here and has worked on this power supply at one time. Let's see what we can find. Okay, so we have C201, C202, and C203. That's the two, three capacitors in the power supply. This is the main transformer, and this is the choke coil. And we have a capacitor across these two capacitors, most likely to take noise off of the line, any noise that may be coming in through the AC line. And then we have a Mallory power resistor here, which don't know, it's R201, don't know what the resistance is on it. Um, could be, it says RW, 21V312. So I don't know, could be 21 volts, 312 ohms, but I don't think so. I think that's just a, a part number. Uh, we can check it while it's in circuit, right? So let's do that. Let me get this frequency generator cable out of the way. And we will check that resistor and just see what we got here while we're at it. My eyes playing tricks on me today. So we're looking at 3 kilovolts. Okay, 3.2 kilovolts. That makes sense. Um, we have a, the input for the power here and here. This is the input for the... Oh, that's awfully loose. Those are loose connections. Contacts. This is the input for the primary of the transformer. And we got roughly 6 ohms. Of course, you know, it's hard to read that way. And what else? The choke itself. It's hard to read the resistance of a choke while it's in circuit. Especially if I can't keep the wires on. 347 ohms. And what did we say it was? Uh, 400. So, not bad. It's in range. Um, we have a tube here in the power supply section. Not sure exactly what that tube would be doing. It's a 6X4, and it looks like brand new. 6X4, Sylvania. So they had the contract, obviously, for those tubes. Um, not sure who did the transformers. They don't seem to have a name on those. They probably were not allowed to put their name on those. Okay, so it's a military contract. The capacitors. Uh, this one is six microfarad and looks like seven hundred no three hundred and seventy volts. So six microfarad at three hundred and seventy volts. And they are aero box caps. Made in USA. Use caution in disposal. Okay. And this one, we don't know what it is because the band is over it. And that one, we don't know what it is because it's facing the other way up and the band's over it. But I'm sure that those capacitors are toasty, toasty. Um, before we check them, I need to make sure they're fully discharged. So let's do that. 
And to do that, I'm just going to use a little resistor here, something low. Uh, that's a 1K, that's a little bit high. There we go. 220 ohm, 1 watt resistor. That's plenty good. Actually, it's about a 3 watt, I would imagine. Let's see what it is. It should be uh, 22 ohms. That may be a black. I don't know if that's black or brown. That's brown. It should be 220. Yeah, right on the money. 220 and 0% tolerance. Okay. We'll use him. Let's short this guy out. Well, he's showing. Let's see if we got anything on this one. No, well, looks like it's dead anyway. But it's always good to check. What about across these two? Yeah. I don't see any problem, but you know, it's always good to check. You never know if there's a bleeder resistor or not, and I'm thinking that is. So, I mean, it's functioning dual role, and I think part of it is bleeder resistor. Okay, so we got no voltages, that's good. We can check the capacitors. Um, move this. Stand this up this way where we can see it. Can you see that okay? Yeah. All right. So this one here um, is going to there. It's going here. I would say they're in parallel. So what we're going to do is pull this wire up here so we can get a reading on it. I'm sure it's not only dead, but leaky as can be. No, dead, I mean, not with intolerance. You would think they would have used the... A slip-on connector on that. And not the wire bit, because it's military. Yeah. I'm going to run the wire all up if I don't do it, if I do that. So let me just cut it. You can do this a little faster, right? I don't want to spend all day on it. I just want to check it. I know it's bad. Okay, let's see what we got. First, we'll check capacitance. Okay, so I'm assuming this is a negative and this is a positive. Well, that's not bad. 5.7 microfarads. Try it again. We just clip these on. Okay, it should still be charged, so somewhat charged, so we should get a reading a little bit faster. There it is. 5.7 microfarad. And see, it's pretty stable actually. Alright, let's see if we can see any kind of ESR on that. So we will just connect this to these. I'll show you this in just a second. Let me get it connected. Okay, can you see that? Nope, you can now. All right, I'm just jumping right in. So we got the resistors of the wires, right? But we're looking for series resistance or, or ESR. And the ESR is 0.49 ohms. That capacitor is amazing. It's pretty good. 5.7 nanofarad at 0.49 ohms. Hmm. Okay, the only way we can disconnect this one is right here. All right, so I'm going to just leave the wire in its general area so we know where it goes, but it doesn't matter. I just want to make sure we know where it goes. All right, now we'll check that one. And let's just check it with this and see what this says, and we'll compare it with the digital meter. So we know that's the blue, uh, to be a positive because it's red wires. Da -da 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 -da. Still connected up to our contraption here, and we'll check it. And according to that, it's also 5.7 nano uh, microfarads, um, so and 0.47 ohms ESR. Okay, let's check it on the 
secondary meter here and see if we get roughly six microfarads or 5.7 microfarads. No. 5.702. I'm seeing a, uh, I'm seeing that we got some incredible capacitors. I never seen capacitors that were that good after that many years. It's amazing, right? I'm not going to disconnect the other one because odds are we're going to get the same reading. Um, I don't think I can read it in circuit, unfortunately, but it has a whole lot of wires going to it, and I just don't want to cut them all off right now. So this one's off, and this one's off, but this one is still connected, which goes to ground. And well, it may not be, it may be out of circuit. Let's check it and see. So I'm going to check it with this first. No. I think it's in circuit. The meter can't read it. Oh, no, there it is. 5.7. Amazing. Let's check it. Check the uh, ESR on it as best we can. Now, you know, this is just a ballpark ESR testing because this is pretty good, but... 0.5. So they're all consistent within range. And again, 5.731 nanofarads or 5.7 microfarads. So the meters are agreeing uh, on the capacitance and this one is saying that it's a half a ohm of series resistance. And of course I've got my leads here, right? Let's try, uh, let's see if we can take one of these and take these leads out of circuit. Let me see if I can get in there. Hook to something. Okay, we got a red wire there. Come on, click on it. Oh, how about here? Ah, that worked. And this one, I think I can probably hook it on here. That can come on, get out of that piece of solder. I'm just going to hold that one there and hope that I'm not interfering with the meter. Same, well, same 0.35 uh, ESR, 5.7 microfarads. So what about this guy here? Unfortunately, yeah, we might be able to read him actually, even across. So we're checking this little guy here. <laughs> it, it thinks it's a MOSFET. Interesting. It's reading that as a MOSFET. Let's try that again. Oh, now it thinks it's an inductor. 351.4 ohms. So we don't even know what that thing is. Which means that it's in circuit and so we can't get a connection across it. But let's see. Let's see what happens if we try it anyway with this meter. It won't say MOSFET and it won't say inductor because it doesn't have those capabilities. It doesn't have any software. It's just measuring the capacitance. Okay, so that sucker is saying is open. It's saying that that is completely open. Yeah, it's saying it's open. That's strange. Okay. So... We've looked at the three capacitors. They all seem fine. We checked this choke coil and we got a resistance. That's close to what it said. We got, you know, 340 plus ohms and it says 400. You know, it's in circuit. This should be, there's going to be some voltage drop 